All right, welcome back, guys. This is weekly coaching number 13. I am Mr. Rip. Uh, last week, the focus was on looking to combine spells with other heroes, looking to make big plays, also trying to avoid buying laning items like Null Talisman, Wraith Band, Bracer, and also to stop contesting bounty runes because the student was kind of griefing his own lane by losing a bunch of health all the time. Louis, you were saying the last week was pretty good for that, nothing too eventful, though? Yeah. Okay. What's, uh, what's the MMR now? Uh, one sec. It is... Uh, 1,280. Hey, there we go. 100. Pretty good. Okay, and you wanted to look at this lion game here. Yeah. So, what were the main questions for this game? First, So, first off, was there anything to do with, um... Uh, like creep aggro or the bounty runes or starting items any of those three things that we we're talking about last time um i kind of like i think i did okay with the uh starting like starting items ish if that makes sense mm -hmm. i think i did go to the rune on this one slightly but i thought i was okay and i only went to it like after after if that makes sense Right, didn't the fight for it. Second. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I didn't like sit up early. I just like did a drive by type thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I mentioned last time. That's good. Okay. Um, and then uh, I got I, I didn't get no talisman. Um, <laughs> right. But it's like a bit, it was a bit weird. Like besides, like I just kind of went like like boots and stuff like first and for that, like if that makes sense. Um, I tried to like get like get wards out a lot more like in the lane. Okay. Yeah. Kind of trying to find other ways to spend your money a little bit. All right. Um, oh, let me stream in Discord. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Screen. Okay. Um, so let's put it on your camera here. Okay. Um. So what were we? We were Lion and Life Stealer versus probably Legion Bounty, right? If I had to guess. Nah, it was a Brew, oh, Brew uh, Bounty. Okay. Brew Bounty. Okay. All right. So tell me about starting items then. Obviously, it's just the um, ring of. I thought whatever. I was gonna get like the movement speed to like just so I can like outrun the bounty mm -hmm. if like he comes like for the Janada thing. Yeah. And then I was like, I can just turn it into boots. And then I just got the two wards to, to like focus on like the lane, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I would start with two sentries in this lane because it is a, an invis hero. Um, okay. I think the windlace is really good. I like that logic because you're against double melee. Um, but this is also a lane where like you you shouldn't you shouldn't need the ring of region because they're not going to harass you too much. This is one where you would benefit from throwing in some branches and um, like fairy fires and stuff like that. Just like that extra right click damage, like the timing on that. It is contesting the rune though, you know, like that's the thing we got to oh. be careful about. Because if yeah. there's multiple heroes there, you could lose a bunch of health, right? Gotta be careful about that. Okay. And we also want to be making sure we check the inventory and stuff like that. So when we see that, yeah. So when we see that bounty, checked. yeah. When you see that bounty has a sentry, um, and you only have the one, like you definitely then have to buy another one. Like basically, in order to do this properly, even if he wasn't invis, you kind of always want to have one more sentry than him. And then yeah. if he's invis, that also means you need an extra sentry. So because yeah. because he's invis, because he bought a sentry, and because you pretty much always want your own sentry, you kind of need three. As like a sort okay. of like a baseline um you could maybe get away with two but yeah you really really want it um and basically like how you would decide to place them is I, if i kept thinking I, I i knew he didn't place it so i just kept his inventory and i waited till he placed it if that makes sense yeah that's totally fine especially because you got the um well you did just place it there but there you go nice um because you got the body block on there you don't have to waste your own sentry on it so that's good um, but this is also a reason why you would want to, um, why this sentry can be really important. Because you can see you had that, you had that one trade with Bounty over here, and he outtraded yeah. you, right? Because of his higher damage and his higher armor. Um, yeah. so what the sentry helps us do is, like, we can block this camp without actually being here. 
because we don't want to be yeah. over here because this guy outtrades us. So, like, we want to be over so, here, like, punching Brewmaster, right? On that situation, would you went for dewarding my own or blocking his then? I think it's higher priority to make sure that they don't get theirs. Um, but okay. you will eventually want to unblock your own. The way you did it was fine because he went to body block yours, so you just body blocked his at the same time. That's a normal yeah. interaction. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's like... It's the hard camp is generally more important than the small camp. Um, okay. It, for like kind of multiple reasons. I mean, A, the creeps are more powerful. They'll do more damage to the creeps. But B, you can also utilize it in some way. So usually it's more of an emphasis for both teams. Um, okay. And it, it also could be it can be a little bit harder to get back here and keep this blocked where you can kind of unblock this whenever you want to. It's not so bad. So like very frequently, like, you know, it'll get blocked for the first wave and you won't get to use it anyway. Right. So it's okay. kind of it's almost like not a big deal if he blocks the first one because you, you know, like kind of you wouldn't have had much use for it regardless. So like I would yeah. opt for in, in a lane matchup where I feel like I need to be scared of the enemy support. I would opt for blocking theirs over unblocking my own first and then I would okay. unblock. But you know it's kind of whatever it's not really a massive deal um and it's not like they clear the camp very quickly either they don't have a lot of aoe and you guys don't regardless but it's kind of about the matchup between the four heroes so like which heroes kind of like out damage each other um because like if they out trade you if they out damage you then you can't walk up to contest a pull that they do right yeah okay so now we got lots of vision okay i like that a lot I'd want to find an opportunity to use this mana drain at some point, even if it's just on like a range creep. Preferably on the Brewmaster, though. Get past this. I think I use it. I think I use it on the creep. I like like thirty seconds or something. Sure, sure. This is also because you're against a bounty hunter. You can kind of get double value. It's a little bit greedy, but you can get double value if you block their camp right here. Okay. Because then it's kind of seeing into the lane regardless. So I will do similar things against like Sand King and stuff like that, where I'm kind of achieving okay. two things at once. Um, the flip side to that is that if they're good, they're going to be buying sentries as well. And so your blocking sentry is likely to get dewarded because they're going to be looking for sentries in the area anyway. So okay. if that's the case, if it's really, really important that the hard camp doesn't spawn, then you would want to block as far away from the, the lane as possible. You'd want to block like up here in this corner, right? Okay. If it's not so important, but you want the value, then you can put it down here. It's kind of a how greedy you want to get with it kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I've been trying to incorporate a lot, and I think you could do it too, especially in these double melee lanes. Um, just let's watch this back. I want you to watch like this portion right here. And look at how many times you could have clicked Brewmaster. Okay. That makes sense. So this entire time, you could be clicking him. Yeah. Um, even if you aggro the creeps a little bit, like, it's okay. Um, getting this, like, right-click damage in really does pay off a lot because you... It's twofold. You're setting up for a potential kill later on, and you're also like protecting your own carry, right? Um, so okay. if you're the only ranged hero in a lane, like kind of your job is to be throwing right clicks like constantly, nonstop, just right clicking something. Even if you're tanking creeps while you're doing it, you know, as long as you're not tanking too much, just constant, constant, constant poke. Very important. Okay. So that's the next thing to look at. And you can see why, um, if you look at your items, this Ring of Regen like has done almost nothing, right? I think you maybe you it used a little bit back here, but you haven't really had to use a lot of tangos or anything. I don't remember if you sent more. Do you have to send more? I don't think yeah. you did. Yeah, I I, I think I, I I gave some to like the life stealer. Okay, you're you're then. passing some. Gotcha. There was that one period where you got low trading with bounty hunter. I think you just naturally regened off of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this. All this regen could be achieved with the tangos that you bought, so the, you kind of just don't need this ring. So if this was extra, you know, a few extra branches, the damage adds okay. up. Even though it's only like plus two, plus three damage, 
if you're throwing, yeah. you know, 10, 20, 30 right clicks in a lane, that really starts to add up. Plus, it also helps you with getting the random deny and last hit here and there as well. That doesn't hurt. Um, branches are OP, basically. Okay. It's pretty lit rare. It's, it's actually very, very rare that I'm not, not showing up to a lane uh, without branches. Or I'm showing up to a lane without branches. Super rare. Other than that, I like the rest of the items. It's just you're kind of you're playing really far back here, so this is you. You need to abuse your movement speed and your range to get more out of this. Okay. Maybe you're not going to kill them, but you, what you could be doing is you know zoning this brewmaster away, so he's losing XP and gold. You are you're already winning this lane, but you could be winning it harder. That's all. Okay. So let's jump forward a little bit. I think that's what kind of makes the difference. Um, when it comes to ranking up as a support, it's kind of the trick. It's in some ways it's like it's not good enough to just like for everything to be okay. That's our baseline. That's what we want to be aiming for. You know, like is life stealer yeah. allowed to hit the creeps and are we not dying? That's like the minimum, right? That's what we want to achieve. But then yeah. in order to start like winning more games than you're kind of supposed to, you need to start winning lots of lanes, right? And that means like going for kills basically. Like getting a lot out of a situation. Um, this this lane should be like incredibly hard for this brewmaster in a way, and it should be putting a lot of it should be putting a lot of pressure on bounty hunter to like trade with you like crazy, because if he doesn't, then you just throw right clicks at brewmaster twenty four seven, and then he just can't even walk up to the creeps anymore. But, like basically, like what we would expect is like they're even level with you. Like at this point, you guys should have been able to build at least at least one of you should have a level advantage if we were playing it in yeah. that way like we were zoning away and we were denying lots of creeps and then in the process of doing that like when we get them low then you know if there's no kill attempt that we can make that's when we can go pull and they can't even contest it because they're too low because then we might kill them right so it's always like this working yeah. up to it any questions about it so far no okay that's okay Um, and then, you know, one thing you can do, actually, and I find I find this helpful as well. Um, you can go into your post game and if you have Dota Plus, do you have Dota Plus? I can't remember. Uh, nah. OK, well, if you ever decide to get it, this is one of the advantages. We can go to the damage breakdowns and we can look at, like, how much damage you did to everybody with everything. So, like, I can see you did 672 damage to Bristleback with right clicks. You did 836 to Bounty Hunter, right? Yeah. Um, that can be, like way higher just just way higher okay. let me see if i can find like one of my recent games this was a game i was playing pugna um i just played this game and it was also double or i was they had double melee and we were double ranged right um so look yeah. at the damage difference here i did 1500 damage to the brew and 800 okay. damage to earth spirit just because it's constantly 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 throwing right clicks because they don't threaten me so it's just like here eat it you know force them to buy lots of regen <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Life Stealer is super broken right now, though. Um, so <laughs> as long as he's allowed to click on stuff, he's pretty much just automatically winning his lane. It's pretty stupid. Um, and I would say even at this point, once he's level five, you can start roaming. You actually could have started roaming like a while ago um, because he's such a safe kind of laner. Um, okay. And especially once he hits six. Once he hits six, if he dies, it is 100% his fault. Like right now, you can leave okay. him because it is so freaking hard to kill um, a life stealer who has infest because he just jumps inside a creep. Like you need to bring like a silence and enough damage to kill him and then enough damage to kill the creep he jumps inside of. It's stupid, right? Plus he can just rage TP okay. out. So he's super Gucci right now. We want to be getting out of this lane, starting to do other stuff. So the earliest you could have done that Let's see. Kind of, kind of tough. Um, but we also, we want, always want to be thinking about runes as well. And that's anytime there's a rune up, that's an opportunity to roam around. Let me just put it on for camera okay. real quick. I feel like on like hard support, you post like babysit more. There's a limit. So you, this goes for 
any support in any lane you only your okay. goal is to babysit them for as long as they need you to babysit them that's it every single hero in the game would prefer to have a solo lane right that's why mid you know levels and gets as much gold as it does because it has a solo lane it's not splitting that xp with anybody okay. um yeah we do a lane because there aren't five lanes if there were five lanes i can freaking guarantee you the meta would evolve into five solo lanes like people would find a way to play heroes that can just solo because that extra gold and xp going to nobody is a huge lost opportunity right so we have to cram multiple heroes into multiple lanes because of that um hmm. so the carry is usually weak early he needs your protection for a little bit but as soon as he doesn't need your protection anymore um you're free to leave right so mm -hmm. like in this instance um this is kind of an odd one because the wave is pushed up but life stealer's a, a hero that can jungle effectively so if this was a little bit higher mmr um i could be telling my life stealer right now like hey you know the camp's open you can go pull for yourself i'm gonna go roam for the for the river rune right okay. and if he doesn't understand that that is a hundred percent on him he should know that shit by now right so just because the waves up here doesn't mean he can't do anything like he's level four level five he has a regen item and he has regen naturally like he can go kill this camp he can kill this camp he can go kill these camps you know there's a million things for him to do doesn't have to be sitting right here yeah this power rune is really important um you know even though you have a pa mid for some reason man your games are weird doesn't matter like <laughs> <laughs> if this is a dd or a haste or an invis this can usually lead to a kill um it's less important because neither of these hero have, heroes have a bottle, but um, it is still important. And I think just to get the practice in, I think you should try to go for every power rune, even if it's not actually relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, just to get in the mm -hmm. habit of doing it, it's a really big deal. Um, you know, we could roam away from him right now. We could go get this rune, and then if he if he looks like if it looks like he needs us, you know, if he's having trouble. We can come back, and if it doesn't look like he needs us, then we can either try to kill middle, or we can go play top and put pressure on them. And so that way, mm -hmm. you're initiating the lane phase breaking down. So now the uh, the onus is on these guys to react to it, because when you bring three heroes to lane their lane and they only have two, now what? Okay, does the bounty hunter have to come here to offset that? Does this support have to roam away? Does mid have to start rotating? Like you start forcing them to make decisions. As well as obviously you have the material okay. advantage of more heroes in a lane, right? Because that's how you that's how you really win the lane phase. Is you get it so that your core is completely fine by himself and they can't even contest him anymore. Like you know when you lose your lane to like a Slark? You know, and then you're like, yeah. shit, how do we kick him out of that lane? Because every time we go up there, like he's more powerful than everyone else, right? Like that's what we're yeah. aiming for. Life Stealer is that type of hero. Um Viper, Razor, Slark, even like Troll Warlord to an extent. Ursa. These are all these kind of like lane dominating heroes to an extent. Maybe not Troll Warlord, but you get what I'm saying. Um, yeah. They can like free farm and you go up to stop them and they're just they just boot you out. Right. So that's what we want to be aiming for. We shouldn't have to babysit a life stealer forever. He can babysit himself. Um, like this is pull. This pull is good. So like what we want we can extend on this like since we're already here um what you can do i was gonna make how come sometimes the pulls don't work on the creeps when you hit like they don't they don't follow you uh this one here yeah because I, I think i hit the other creep like the the uh the large one. Oh, okay back here into the, yeah so i like after so after that one i try to pull the large one into the small one Oh, okay, okay, I understand. And, uh... Uh, and then it just stops following me. Like, it, it did it a few times. Let's see. So... I'm not sure. So, every creep... Every camp has a leash range to it. 
Um, it could also be simply down to the movement speed of the creep. I don't know specifically. Maybe these particular like pinecone guys don't go as far. Could be that. Because I, I, I think after I pulled them into like the wave, like in the middle of our lane, just when I did that pull, then they didn't like follow me. So yeah. After that, I think I pulled them again. Yeah. So like... the, the other thing is that they lost vision of you, right? So one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. They don't have vision of you anymore. They leave. So that's why. Okay. It's because these trees, okay. are, these trees are blocked. Remember, we had that three second aggro cooldown, right? Yeah. So they're only going to chase you for a little bit, and then if if they're they're constantly like sending out sonar to see if something is threatening them, right? That's how the AI, the the neutrals, and all the creeps work. So, like, you aggro them, your thing goes on cooldown for, like, three seconds, effectively. Your, like, global aggro thing goes on cooldown, right? Um, yeah. Then they they are automatically aggroed to you for a certain amount of time. I think it might it might be three seconds. I'm actually not sure. But they're aggroed to you for a certain amount of time. They won't just chase you to the ends of the earth, right? Plus, they yeah. also have their leash range. They have to run back to what they're doing. Um, so, because around that time, you're behind like you're behind blocking terrain they can't see you anymore and because you're not throwing an attack like if you stood here and threw another attack and maintained vision of them they would go a little bit farther okay. so this is also something you can do with pulls right so for instance you know like if the brewmaster right clicks the life stealer and gets the creeps to come up to here and then he does it again and then he right clicks on the creeps and attacks them and aggroes them he can pull the creeps even farther back like you can just pull them straight off the wave if you do it right. Oh, okay. Um, it all it, it always has to do with aggro. You have to be keeping that aggro like refreshed on them, and you need to make sure the creeps are like aware of you. Like you know, sometimes enemy creeps won't follow you up hills. Like yeah. you, you accidentally pull this wave, and you like pull it over here and pull up the stairs. Sometimes they'll follow you. Sometimes they won't. Um, the way that works is they'll follow you if they have vision of you. And so sometimes you stand at the top of the stairs and you click them once to give them vision and then yeah. then they can follow you. So in this one, I think they lost they lost vision of you here. I'm not 100% sure, but I, that's my guess on it. Because this pull is not easy to do anyway because of the very short leech range, but it is possible. Um, and it's, it's mainly to do with that. So when you're doing these pulls, this is just a basic thing you can change about the way you're doing pulls, right? Instead of walking past the creeps over here, stand in between the creeps and let them hit you. That'll be much more okay. consistent. Because sometimes the leash range is not wide enough and sometimes you run past the creeps and they just give up, right? But if you stand here and let them hit you right next to friendly creeps, that triggers your friendly creeps to start aggroing on this guy so long as enemy creeps are not aggroed on them. So you won't be able okay. to pull them off of the dire creeps into the neutral creeps but like if you time it so that this creep dies right around the time these guys are hitting you they will then aggro over here you want to let creeps hit you while you're while you're pulling uh any questions about any of that so far no i think that's fine. yeah creep aggro is super confusing go ahead sorry i think it's that, like I'll just try like to like make it that they hit me or hit them the creeps more. Yeah, that'll make it way more consistent. You just let them hit you. Okay. So anyway, what I wanted to show you was so if it's like six thirty eight right now, you know you have your boots. What's the next relevant objective coming up here? Um, take secure a tower. Mm, look at the clock. What's spawning soon? Like a root, like the, 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 the purple thing. <laughs> the wisdom rune, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wisdom rune is coming up. So that should be I, your next I thing to I, go for. I do go for it, but I die, if that makes sense. Okay. Well, going for it late is fine, but like what we would want to see is as long as life stealer is okay and it's a good spot. Um, we'd want to see you uh, leaving think... early, so you get there at seven minutes. So like it's spawning, no, no, I, you're I, ready. I did get there at seven, like. Uh... I don't think so, but that's okay. Not in this game anyway. You might be confusing it with another game. Nah, cause I think I think it's this one. Okay, like, no, nope, seven there. right now. Oh, no. yeah. oh yeah, it's another one. Yeah, yeah. 
it's probably another game. It's, yeah. it's no big deal. But anyway, what the the goal should be like if it looks re if it looks like it's reasonable, we want to be here before seven minutes, so that oh, I think I'm, it spawns. I think I get it at the fourteen one maybe. Okay, and I get yeah. There and I die. All right, yeah, that's fine. Maybe. That's fine. Just that's a, that's another thing to try and incorporate. So like, um, here, let's. We'll, we'll put we'll put a pin in that but basically uh it's we want to be there at the seven minute rune we want to be there at the six minute rune so the six the seven and the eight minute runes are all relevant objectives to be looking for okay and we want to try and the goal is that we set up our lane so that is it is okay for us to not be in the lane at those times right Okay. So if life stealer is 100% health and this camp's unblocked and you've done a good job of harassing these two heroes, then you've made it okay to leave. He doesn't need you, right? He could freeze this right outside the tower. I hope he does. And he's good. He's completely fine now. You have time to roam away to be grabbing this room, grabbing this room, grabbing the next room. Like, that's our goal. We don't want to be sitting in, in lane with the carry for 15 minutes, right? Okay. The less, the better, but you also need to realize that a certain amount is just necessary. And that comes down to the matchup between the heroes, right? Okay. Yeah. This is why heroes like Shen and Enchantress are, in a way, kind of broken. Because in these down periods where the carry doesn't need them, they can go off and kill jungle camps by themselves really easily, right? So they get to farm more than normal. That's one of the reasons why they're good. Okay. So, uh, let's sum it up there. So, takeaway number one. Um, so, against invis heroes, bring extra sentries. Yep. Against... Against supports that outtrade you 1v1, bring an extra sentry so you don't have to body block the camp, right? Okay. So, that both of those make sense? Yeah. Okay. Two, um... Buy more branches. <laughs> Stats. Okay. So, buy more ranches. Stats are good for harass and securing last hits and knives, especially if you're ranged versus all melee. You will not suffer a lot of harass, so you don't need items like Ring of Regen. Right, that makes sense because the Ring okay. of Regen was kind of either the Tangos or the Ring of Regen weren't really relevant here. You, you actually didn't need both of them. Sure, it, ex okay. it it accelerates your Tranquil Boots, but the reason we want Tranquil Boots is primarily for the Regen, not specifically the movement speed. Right, because when Tranquil Boots get disabled by taking damage, you're actually slower than if you just had Brown Boots. Um, okay. So they're they're nice for roaming because you move faster than normal, but they're worse for fighting because you move slower than normal. So it's kind of a like sort of a roaming item, right? Um, oh. It's still it's still good you... to buy them. But go ahead, sorry. I used to just think of them as like a HP trade, like I would trade my like raid to really low HP, and then I can just heal up. Yeah. And then like yeah. if if the enemy hasn't got like heal themselves, I'll like I'll be more. Mm -hmm. healthy than them yeah you know, like they serve that function as well absolutely they do that um but it's kind of like like to be honest um you could it's theoretically possible that you play this lane with with like just brown boots and no region at all like oh okay simply because their ranged harass is absolute trash like the only way they ranged harass you is like cinder brew and bounty hunter throwing constant shurikens at you but that's not yeah. normally what those heroes do if they do that you then have to start buying regen but because they don't they're not ranged heroes like you can get away with actually having way less regen and incorporating more stats so that you just do more damage um if 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 this was a game where like there's like they have a one like range yeah is it okay to get how much regen do i get then then you have to buy more than them so assuming okay. that you they're gonna trade with you constantly like let's say let's replace this bounty hunter with a rubik right so it's brewmaster rubik okay. right rubik's gonna be like ah I'm fade bolt and right click you over and over and over again you have to buy more region yeah. than him because your stats are relatively similar 
So whoever wins the trade war and whoever wins the regen war eventually has an advantage and then can play for a kill. Or has control of the camps because the other one is too low to contest it. So when it comes to what you're buying versus what the enemy is buying, it's always more than the enemy support is buying. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, if they buy a sentry, you need to buy an extra sentry. If they buy more regen, you need to buy more than that. Unless you can harass them for free and they don't get to do damage back to you, right? Yeah. And then the goal is for them to not let you to not let you harass them because you're just draining money from them, right? So yeah. that's sort of your job as a support. Your job is to invest in the moment. Your job is to spend all your money to secure like what's happening right now, you know? Um, and then that sets up for the future. So, okay. yeah. So, you know, if it was a Rubik and we were laying against a Rubik, I would expect to buy two or three sets of tangos throughout the entire lane, both for me and the guy I'm laning with. That's where a stick okay. becomes more important. If I'm playing a melee uh, support, and I know I'm against a range support, I'll buy, I'll usually buy a salve as well. Like if I'm like a clockwork or tree or something, I'll buy a salve so that I can go in and like trade all my health and then heal back up again really quickly. You don't always have to yeah. do that. It's just kind of what, what I do, right? Okay. Okay. So takeaway number three. Um, it's like, I think we have this another game where it was like, I was like PL. And like the earlier game, the old, as I'll guess, it was like two melee. That's like OD, um, Venel. And I did just, I didn't buy like a salve, but I did kept buying like uh, the tangos. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, uh, yeah. I... If you need them, then buy them. But, like, so basically, what, what we're gonna, here's how we sum it up, right? Um, as a support, if there's something that you or your team needs, you or someone else has to buy it preferably you right so your team needs a glimmer yeah. cape you got to buy it your team needs more tangos you got to buy it your team needs centuries smokes dust you got to buy those things you can't you can't so, not buy things you need go ahead sorry i was gonna say like say like the, like i'm with like a i'm not a, a carry and he just keeps taking like damage like a lot of the time yeah do, do, do i always just keep buying him tangos or is it like the do i like at some point say i, I need other stuff like what's like I mean, I don't want you to spend all of like, so it, you would that would be a case by case basis, right? So if it's like <sighs> I've run into this before as well with carries as well that like um, shit their pants if you don't buy them a salve every five seconds. Um, that's kind of a stupid way to think about the game. There's a certain amount of regen that they should be expecting to buy for themselves, but okay. also because you're the five specifically, because your job is to secure the lane for the cores. Like that's it. Like the five and the four, their primary job is to make sure their cores can farm in the first 10 minutes, right? Okay. Once that's achieved, they then look to shut down the core of the enemy heroes, right? Okay. So it's, you know, first priority, can we farm? Second priority, let's stop them from farming, right? yeah so um if he can't even step into the you know step up to get a last hit without getting pounded then that means you need to like try to help him harass you might need to tank some damage for him you might need to buy extra regen for him you know don't show up to lane with 15 tangos but like try to strike a balance there you know yeah um and typically I find that if it's a lane where I need to keep buying like lots of sentries and lots of tangos and stuff like that, then there's a certain point where I feel like I'm wasting my money and my time and I start to look to try and do other things. So I'm like, okay, this is becoming too much of an investment. It's it's obviously just a bad matchup, right? Yeah. We want to try and identify it ahead of time, but sometimes it takes getting hit in the face a million times to, to get it, right? Um, so anyway. So identify, in this instance, we don't have that problem. So identify where the core is self-sufficient and safe and use opportunity to roam. So once life stealers, you know, sitting at 100% health and they're both half health and he's like level four or five and he has his helm of iron will, he's good. If the camps are open, like technically he should be fine. You should be allowed to roam. If you were playing with a higher MMR carry, he would be okay in this situation. 
be like, oh, okay. okay. My camp's open, I'll go pull for myself, or I'll go back up into the jungle, it's no big deal, right? Because the power mm -hmm. rune is supposed to be really important. Um, probably gonna have trouble with that at your rank, because people are not emphasizing the runes as much, they don't know how to use the runes, your carry doesn't know what to do when you leave, but it's still a skill that you need to learn, right? And you need to build on. Okay. So takeaway number four is roam for six minute, seven minute, eight minute rooms. And this this is like a primary thing we need to be thinking about. This is very important. Um, okay. Every time what I get I coached, do? sorry, one sec. Every time I get coached by a higher MMR player, whether it's like Mastery or BSJ or Quixotics or whatever, they're always like, I want to see you rotating for these runes. Can you rotate for these runes? Try to set up so that you can rotate for these runes. Swear to God, every single time I've been coached by someone, they're telling me this. Like, it's so important. Even though it so doesn't like, look if, important, but good. Yeah. If the enemy has a has gone for the ruin, do I what do I fight for their ruin? Even like I could like die or do I like go back? Um So it's a timing thing. Are you saying like let's say the bounty has left before you to go there? No, no, it's like so like say the seven minute ruin. Like mm -hmm. like like and like they we both go to get there at seven minutes, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Should I still commit to go there because I'm going to be on their side of the field, or should like like should like if if I think if I think like I get there and then they kill me mm -hmm. after, is it worth it? Like still basically, it's worth it if you steal it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. even if you fail, it's worth the try because it's a good practice. Um, okay. Obviously, it's bad to die, but it's sort of one of those gamble things where at this stage of the at seven minutes into the game, you dying doesn't matter too much. It really yeah. doesn't matter too much. Um, but that wisdom rune does, because that wisdom rune is going to dictate how close both supports get to level six. Because what okay. happens is in games where they steal both of your wisdom runes, you end up level five until it's like 10, 12 minutes, right? And then you yeah. don't have your ults, so they get to death ball and start pushing down towers because you can't fight effectively, right? This okay. happens all the time. Every single game where we lose both wisdom runes, we usually end up actually losing. I think we usually end up losing the whole game. Yeah, because it's just it's just spiraling out of control at that point. So at the very least, we need to secure one of them. Someone needs to get okay. yours. If possible, we want to try and get go for theirs as well, because basically the risk reward factor is like the reward is too high. Either you get a massive lead, or you know they get a, they're at a massive deficit, right? And yeah. the one death doesn't actually matter that much. Now, okay. sometimes it's not reasonable. So, like, let's say you guys are both half health, and you're sitting under the tower at like six minutes then thirty seconds, and the wave is pushed into you, right? Yeah, you probably can't afford to go for it right now because if you leave, they might just dive the carry. It's probably pretty obvious that you're gonna die. If you, say, see that the support has roamed away to get there before you, like, let's say the wave is pushed up to here, like, let me back it up a little bit. Let's say you're in this position, right? Yeah. I would not be assuming that I'm going to get the rune because Bounty Hunter is sitting in between me and the rune, and Bounty Hunter really has nothing better to do right now. This guy should be going for his Wisdom rune. They're like, what, okay. what does he do here, right? He does nothing. You guys probably aren't gonna dive, I would assume. So he does he can't actually help because he's half health anyway. Like he should be moving. He shouldn't be doing movements like this. Um once the creeps get in this position, Brewmaster should be relatively safe. He should start moving now to get the wisdom room. And because he's in this position, like I wouldn't assume that I can get it. But what I would be doing is I'd be positioning myself on the right over here and I'd be ready for it. So if I see that Bounty Hunter's not going to go for it, you know, yeah. if I if I can keep track of him, and I can see that, you know, uh, let's see. I can see the Bounty Hunter's sitting up here. You know, if I see him do this auto attack right now, and I'm standing here, I'm booking it. Because I know, okay, okay. he's not going to get there before me. He's distracted with what he's doing, right? So okay. you're always, you're racing the enemy support to get there. Um, 
if it looks like he has a head start in that race, don't bother, right? Okay. Otherwise, yes, go for it. Um, and when it comes to the power runes, the six minute and the eight minute runes, yeah, you just you got to find a way to get over there ahead of time. We want to be yeah. arriving ahead of time. We want to be arriving a few seconds ahead of time, usually. Okay. And that means we need to be leaving a lot earlier based on how long it takes you to run across the map with boots or whatever. That might be 20 seconds early, 30 seconds early, 40 seconds early, whatever. We want to get going ahead of time because we know that's the next objective. Um, okay. Take away number five. Um, there was a little bit of stuff to do with creep aggro and stuff there. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. I think it was kind of like you need to buy a little bit more sentries. Um, you, in this instance, you ended up with too much regen. Um, so a little bit of stats in there would have been nice. Um, not yeah. the not the end of the world. If, it's not a huge deal. Um, but just I want you to recognize that. So if you're ending the lane phase with three tangos and tranquil boots, that's a clue that you actually didn't need all the regen or that you weren't using the regen enough. Like maybe you needed to be okay. trading more so that these tangos were used up by the time you were done. Okay. Yeah. Um, that happened to me a lot. I would always show up to lane with multiple mangoes and I'd end up leaving the lane with multiple mangoes. And now I don't start the lane with mangoes anymore because I'm like, I don't even spend them. <laughs> I don't even spend them okay. when I lane. So like, why am I buying them? They're a waste. That, that gold could be going to something else. You know, if I'm low, if I'm no mana, I'll ferry out some mangoes and some clarities or whatever. But like starting okay. with something and not using it is effectively wasted gold in some cases. OK, so try to be more efficient. Yeah, try to be more efficient. So um, so if you have a lot of regen, try to use it by taking traits. Um, OK, if you're Ending lane with extra regen. Consider if you actually needed. Consider if you actually needed it to begin with. Sometimes you do, and then the enemy heroes just didn't bother trading with you, and so you didn't have to spend any. And that's on them. Yeah. So that's like a bonus. Um, but sometimes it is literally like people are just buying too much regen, and they actually didn't need that much. Like everyone has their own courier now. As long as you're good at using yeah. the courier, like that's always in your back pocket. Like I don't, I usually don't start with two tangos in my inventory anymore. I just start with the one set. If I need anything else, I can send it because I can't eat six tangos in the time it takes for me, for my courier to get to me, you know, on a hero like, um, like uh lion, you know, I can't spend yeah. 400 mana fast enough to need three mangoes in my inventory, right? Okay. Or like Jakiro, yeah. right? Can't physically spend the mana fast enough. I mean, obviously you could just cast the spell off cooldown, but that wouldn't usually be efficient. But like, you actually just don't need that much regen nowadays. Uh, okay. Because of the couriers. So yeah, okay. I think that's that's pretty much good. So next steps. Um, because this is an ongoing thing. Thinking about our opening items and stuff like that. Like this is this going to be a constant work in progress. So. How about this? For next week, what I really want to see is bring me multiple replays where you're rotating for every rune. Six, seven, and eight minute runes. We'll just focus on those three. Six, seven, and eight minute runes. Like, I want to see you making an attempt to go for all three of those in the same replay. In multiple replays. Okay? okay? This will okay. be really big. And it's going to blow up in your face and you're going to die on the runes and all that stuff, but it'll teach you a lot about, like, you know, were you creating the correct conditions? Oh, are they stronger than us on rune fights? You know, like all that kind of stuff. It's going to teach you a lot just trying to incorporate that. Okay. Yeah. Bring multiple replays where you rotated for the six, seven, and eight minute runes. And then once once you've done that, we can talk about like ways you can optimize it, right? Because okay. it's first off, it's not always going to be correct to do it. And second off, there's going to be things you're going to need to do ahead of time to make that a good option, right? You're going to need okay. to secure your camps. You're going to need to make sure your your carries in a good condition. You're going to need to be harassing and stuff like that. You might have to fight for the Lotus first. You might need to make sure you have your TP ready so that when you walk over here, you can TP back. You might need to TP here to get it, whatever. All this stuff is like prep work you have to do ahead of time to make sure you can secure it. 
Okay. We'll, we'll figure that out. So uh, if there's nothing else, we can go out there. And do you want to aim for next Wednesday? Yeah, it's, it's the same time, like 10 flight. Okay, like two yours. Yeah, because that's just said. 2 p.m. my time. Yeah, but we'll, we'll just keep it at that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let me write it down. Yeah, PST. And PM. What are you? GMT? Yeah. GMT? Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. All right, cool. Okay. Well, good job. Yeah, good job on you. the climb, man. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. Cool. All right. I thank will... you. No problem. You're welcome. I will catch you next Wednesday then. All right. Thanks. I'll see you later. Hope you had a good Easter in that as well. Oh, yeah. You too. Happy Easter, man. All right. Have yeah. a good one. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Uh, check out the playlist with the other coaching videos if you want to learn more. Uh, comment down below if you had any questions. Check out my Patreon if you want to get coached by me. And I record these live on my Twitch at Mr. Up TV. I stream every weekday, uh, 2 30 p.m. PST to about 7 p.m. I'm going to start trying to move my schedule earlier, though. I'd like to start streaming earlier than that. So, like 1 p.m., 12 p.m., hopefully. But anyway, yeah, I'm online every weekday. So, come say hi. Thanks for watching. See you around.